Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. This, this evening we are here again in Rome, Italy. Our last night that we will actually be here, we'll be getting on the road going to Geneva to cover the Syrian peace talks that are happening up there, or at least the beginning of that. They're trying to put together this peace talk initiative in, at the United Nations there in Geneva. Uh, but here again with the Vatican in the backdrop, there were some things that I wanted to mention to you, something that I briefly mentioned the other day, and that is uh, a comment that I made on Hebrew Nation Radio with the bon, Bonnie and Ron show just the other day. In, the, in that particular broadcast that Bonnie and Ron do on Hebrew Nation, Ron had mentioned uh, there that the, the descendants of Esau, he believed also are part of the Arabic peoples. And I did agree with him. I said, you have to remember that with Esau, Esau had always married in, in amongst the Arabic people and had intermingled their seed, something that Isaac and Rebekah never wanted for Esau to begin with. But he did. He did it against his own parents' will. And then later, the sole living heir of Esau's descendants after the, after the, uh, the conquest of King David and Saul's battles against the Edomite kingdom, we find out that Hadad, along with some of the eunuchs, escape and go to Egypt. They take the little boy, he's raised by the king of Pharaoh, much like Moses, in fact. And when he becomes of age, he is given the Egyptian daughter of the Pharaoh for his wife. And then later, he requests to go back into his own land, which instead of going back to Edom, or Edomia, he goes into Syria, becomes the king of Syria. So there's a very close connection between the Edomites, the children of Esau, and the Arabic nations. Even to this day, this is why you see the Vatican have such a close alliance with the Arabic people. It's no wonder. We find in Daniel chapter 9, when it speaks about the 70 weeks of Daniel, that it speaks about the prince that shall come, would be of the people who destroyed the temple and the sanctuary. Well, we know Titus, the Roman general who led the conquest against Jerusalem in 70 AD, did destroy both city and sanctuary. But many historians point out that it was the Syrian army that was involved in that. Well, of course. They already had that great connection that they had made back the, during the time that Hadad and many of his own sons who had later become the kings of Syria as well. And so it was a constant conquest going on by the Edomite kingdom. Obadiah, though, clearly identifies Rome as those ones, just like Daniel did, as part of the Edomite kingdom, the children of Esau. He said, you stood aloof as your brother was destroyed by the edge of the sword. Many of these things we've already talked to you about, but I brought up, uh, or when we were in the broadcast on Hebrew Nation Radio, Brother Ron had made a very interesting comparison, as I said, with the children of Esau and the, the Arabic people. But then Sister Bonnie brought up a scripture from Genesis chapter 27 talking about how that Esau would, have, would, would be granted the fatness of the land. Immediately, the Holy Spirit moved upon me and revealed to me what it was. It was the oil reserves. But at that time, and even when I briefly mentioned it to you here on Israeli News Live, I never had the opportunity to sit down and really look at the scriptural evidence behind this. Today, I took that time. And what I'm about to share with you is very, very insightful. Let's take a look at it real quick. Now we also know Genesis chapter 27 verse 29 does speak clearly about the blessing of Jacob. He got his brother's blessing. And he got to be, whoever blesses him shall be blessed. Whoever curses him would be cursed. We know that. But we drop on down about 10 more verses. Just quickly looking at verse 38, a little segment of that. Have you but one blessing my father, Esau begs of his father, after we find out that Jacob had taken his birthright. And then, of course, his father begins to answer. And as Isaac answered, his, his father answered and said unto him, Behold, your dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. And by your sword shall you live and shall serve your brother. And it shall be, watch this now, it shall be when it comes to pass, when you shall have the dominion that you shall break his yoke from off your neck. What you're seeing in behind me is the Pope's dominion. This is Esau's dominion. He has finally broken that yoke from off his neck. 
This is why there's such a huge battle against the Jewish people over Israel. They're there breaking that yoke from off the neck. I want to share with you, though, from the Hebraic side of this, because Sister Bonnie mentioned, as soon as I said that the other day, that the fatness represented the oil. She says, my gosh, brother, the root of the word is, is the Hebrew, Hebrew word for oil, which is shaman, shaman, okay? Let me just read a little bit of this to you in Hebrew. Hine meshimani ha'aris ihaye mashuvan. What is it saying right here? Behold, literally from the oil, in a plural form, from the oil uh, in the earth. That will that will be. It's in future tense. Ihaye. That it will be your dwelling or your seat. In Hebrew, God is literally saying that your, your own descendants, in other words, will sit upon the oil of the earth, the oil riches of the earth. Now, some people might say, well, the Vatican doesn't sit on the oil riches of the earth. Remember, both Arabs and the Vatican have a very close relation and are genetically related. One of the reasons why they say many times that the Palestinians also have genetically genetic background in their blood. It's true because they are one and the same. But what a lot of people may not be aware of is just how strong the Vatican has their ties in the oil companies as well. Now let me just share with you one other thing though, and that's verse 40, where it says, Ve'al harabach tihaya. See? And upon your sword, or, or, or with your, by your sword, you shall live. He's had to fight for it. And that's what the Vatican has done. Both the, from the time of the Crusades, even till today, the battle for this oil is on. Now, many of you guys already know that the wealth of the Vatican is beyond anything that anyone could ever imagine. They're, they're the richest institution in all the world. There's no country that has as much gold as what they have. Not talking about what's just in the Vatican. We're talking about in Federal Reserve's France, America, United Kingdom, etc. It is a wealthy, wealthy nation, and it's a nation of its own right. But also, as I've mentioned before here to you on Israeli News Live, they are huge, huge investors in stocks of Gulf Oil and Shell Company. But Gulf Oil is the most important one of them all, because in Gulf Oil, this is where they have the international ties. Gulf Oil, and by the way, you can look this information up on finance, uh, manila.advfn.com, February 18th, 2013, was one of the last publications on that. Large investments, they, they report on their large investments in the banks with the Rothschilds of, of, of Britain, France, and America, with Hambro's Bank, with the Credit Suez in London, First National Bank, Bankers Trust, Morgan Bank, Chase Manhattan, and again, as I said, Gulf Oil, especially Gulf Oil International. The United Nations World Magazine reported uh, about this as well. But the Gulf Oil and Gas International, this is where the money is. Now what's interesting about this in the Gulf Oil of the Middle East Limited is a partner of Gulf Oil International. This is where all the stock is at, is right there in Gulf Oil. Gulf distributors are in Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, Cyprus, Malta, Pakistan, Afghanistan. Does it not make sense now why the wars are being fought where they are? and why they're being fought. No wonder why just recently, President Barack Obama said that they cannot take the troops out of Afghanistan. No wonder why there's such a huge battle over Syria. President Vladimir Putin signs a contract with Bashar al-Assad, but Gulf Oil has a lot of ownership there. The Vatican can't afford to lose that. Neither can they lose anything with Lebanon on Israel's northern border. Neither can they lose it in Pakistan. Neither can they lose it in Cyprus. And now everything that's being discovered here in the Middle East. And also recently another entity of the Gulf Oil Company that opened up Ethiopia's branch. As we've mentioned in several broadcasts here recently. So there's a major reason and we're seeing prophecy being fulfilled. Genesis 27 identified that Esau would sit upon the oil of the earth. And the Vatican has its major stocks in these oil companies 
and is making sure that its soldiers fight and keep control of it. President Putin, it'll be a rough battle for you because Rome's not just going to let you have it easily. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live here in Rome, Italy. Shalom.